So you've got two objects moving through space and you're wondering, do they run into each other or not? And if they do run into each other, where do they run into each other and what time do they run into each other? We can do all of this using vector equations. So when do these two objects collide? They're moving through two dimensional space, so along the ground, I and J, so like car weaving around, a car weaving around. When do they run into each other? So for them to run into each other, three variables need to line up. The time needs to be the same, the I component needs to be the same, and the J component needs to be the same. In the other words, they need to be in the same place at the same time. So the I components are going to have to be equal to each other. So 2T minus 3 needs to equal T plus 2. And the J components need to be equal to each other as well. So T squared plus 10 would need to be equal to uh, 7T. Now, uh, we can solve either of these. So look, there's just one variable here, T. And there's just one variable here. Uh, this is a quadratic. Uh, this isn't. So this one's going to be easier to solve, and it's really straightforward. So what does this mean? Well, it means that at time 5, they share an I coordinate. Um, I'm just going to write that down. All right, so uh, to draw it, um, all I know so far is that at some time, um, in this case, time 5, one of the particles um, is like somewhere along this X coordinate. I don't know where, but somewhere. And um, one of the other ones is somewhere else along this. I don't know where, maybe somewhere along here. So they have the same X coordinate. Now, if I test that in here, this will tell me whether they have the same Y coordinate at that time. So let's see if time 5 works in this. And it does. So you can see that this works. So at time 5, the coordinate for this one is equal to the coordinate of that one. And at time 5, the coordinate of that one is equal to the coordinate of that one. So when do they collide? The answer is 5 seconds or T5, T minutes, 5 minutes, 5 hours, whatever it is. Whatever that time is, 5. Uh, but you must be asking a second question here. I know when they collide, but where do they collide? Uh, so this is straightforward. Because we know they collide at time 5, we only need to sub time 5 into one of these equations, whichever one looks easier. Uh, and if we sub it into one of those equations, uh, it'll give us an I coordinate and a J coordinate. And that'll be the I coordinate and the J coordinate at which they run into each other. So I'm going to do it in my uh, second one here. At time 5, it's going to be uh, 5 plus 2 I plus 7 times 5 J. And that means they collide at point 7 I plus 35 J. So um, they collide at 7, 35. This is where they're going to run into each other. Um, okay, we're going to keep working with these two particles. We're not going to find a collision point. We're going to find something else. Slightly different question here. Where do their paths cross? So I already know a place where their paths cross. Um, at 7I35J, their paths cross there. And not only do their paths cross there, but they're there at the same time. They run into each other. But there might be another spot somewhere where these like weaving cars cross through each other's paths, but one gets there first and then one comes there afterwards. So how could we find those? Well, we need to treat these times differently. Um, because we don't care when they get there as long as they get there. So when the paths cross, the I components are equal to the J components. Okay, so the I components are equal to each other, and the J components are equal to each other. Um, so I can say that uh, 2 T minus 3 is equal to, and I know you think you know what I'm going to write, but I'm not going to write that. Um, t plus 2. Now, this is a time, a time, so maybe like 5. And this is like another time, right? Because they don't have to arrive at the same time. These times can be different. 
And similarly here, whatever this time is, I can sub it into my first equation. So say that it's time 1 squared plus 10. And that will be need to be equal to um, the, the second time, some other time, uh, 7t subscript 2. And so now what I have is um, two variables, t1 and t2, and two equations, so I can solve those two equations simultaneously. So to do it, I'll just rearrange this to make uh, t2 the subject, and that means that I can now take that and sub it into this equation. Okay, and you can see that we've done that now. Now we can expand that and rearrange it. It's going to end up being a quadratic because I have a t squared there and I'm going to, I'm going to t to the power of 1 there. So I can rearrange it, turn it into a quadratic. A nice little quadratic here. Now it looks like I can solve that by factorizing. Nice and neat there. And therefore, t equals 9 and t equals 5. Now we need to be really careful here because it's not t. It's T1 and T1, T1, T1. So that time 5 there, that's the time at which they collide. But that time 1 equals 9, that's the time at which this first particle crosses the path of the second particle. So the question we were asking was, where do their paths cross? This gives us the time at which the first particle crosses the path of the second particle. So we just need to sub 9 back into our first particle. There. So we've sub 9 into our first particle. 15i plus 91j, that's like way over there and way up here somewhere. So our final answer to this question, where do their paths cross? is the point 1591 and the point that we found the collision point earlier, um, 735. Now if I hadn't have found that collision point earlier, I would just be subbing 5 into this equation as well, and that will spit out uh, 735. Now if you got a little bit confused there, alternative method, convert these to Cartesian equations, convert them to paths, in terms of x and y, and then solve those Cartesian equations uh, simultaneously. So converting these to uh, Cartesian equations is not that difficult. x equals 2t minus 3, y equals t squared plus 10, that's one of our equations here, x equals t plus 2, and y equals 7t. Now, I sort of solve these simultaneously to get rid of the t's in both of these. We've done this before. So that is the Cartesian equation of that. That is the Cartesian equation of that. So I have two paths now, and I just need to solve them simultaneously to see where they meet. So here you can see I've subbed one into the other. It gives us a little bit of a quadratic. We solve that quadratic. x is equal to 7 and 15. 7 and 15 should be familiar because they were the x-coordinates um, of where our paths crossed, uh, we can now sub 7 and 15 back into one of our equations. Probably subbing it into this one would be really, really easy. When we do that, we're going to get two answers, y equals 35 and y equals 91, and therefore we can say that our paths cross at 7, 35 and 15, 91. Now, those are two paths where they cross. Um, we haven't, doing all of that though, we haven't figured out whether they collide at any point. Now, there is of course a way to do that. You can sub the number 7 in, so you can say 2t minus 3 equals 7, t plus 2 equals 7. Solve both of those, uh, you'll find out that t equals 5 at that point. Let um, t squared plus 10 equal 35. Let 7t equal 35. Solve it for t at that point, And you'll find that t is equal to 5 both there and there. So if you sub that in there, 2t minus 3 equals that, 2t, t plus 2 equals that. If you do that, you'll find t equals 5, t equals 5, t equals 5, t equals 5. Therefore, they collide at that point. If you sub 15 in, so 2t minus 3 equals 15, and t plus 2 equals 15, the t's will be different values, meaning they don't collide at that point. Um, so 
two alternative methods and you might be looking at this one and thinking, actually, I really like that second method. I'm going to use that one. I'm going to ignore everything he said previously. But a problem. If we move this thing into three dimensions, you're not going to be able to create um, these paths. And if you can't create these paths, you're going to these sort of Cartesian equations. And if you can't create these Cartesian equations, you're going to have a bad time. So that previous method would allow you to work in three dimensions. Um, so you can use this method, but you need to be aware of its limitations.